Welcome to Marvel Spider-Man 2. This game only recently came out and I can say with my full heart that this is my favorite game of all time. I strongly believe that this is going to get game of the year of 2023, beating out Kong Skull Island and Gollum, which is going to be hard to do. We begin the game with Miles in the classroom, waiting for his teacher, Peter Parker. Now his teacher in the classroom and as Spider-Man. Unfortunately, Miles has a small bladder, so he needs to go to the bathroom as soon as the lesson begins. But due to his codependency, he needs help from Peter in the bathroom, which is honestly just really weird. It looks like Miles didn't even go to the bathroom at all. He was actually doing his Spider-Man responsibilities and investigating the sand cloud in the distance. Now, these two drop their real-world responsibilities and go out and start to save the days, changing into their suits and beginning one of the, the most beautiful web-swinging scenes I've seen, like, ever. It's just, it's so perfect. It's such a great beginning to the game, and I love how they transition into the swinging like they do in every other game. It's just, it's perfect. We swing on into battle and find big boy Sandman, and man, he looks like he's going to be difficult to take down, but Peter's done it once before, and it's going to be much easier with the help of Miles. I try to punch this guy in the face, and it's not my best move, it's a giant man made out of sand, I don't know what I was thinking. In retaliation, he decides to throw me into a building, which is kind of fair, but it's also really rude because there are innocent people just chilling in this building. Maybe that he should keep this between me and him, and the other Spider-Man. He decides that I have a fair argument, and he decides to keep it between me and him, but there is a lot more of him than there is of me. He begins to overpower me, but thankfully I've got these new spider arms which are really sick. This was just an ability in the last game, and now it's a whole power up. He overpowers us again, and instead of using our arms, we kind of let it happen, because we get this mirrored scene of Tobey Maguire's thing in No Way Home where he gets pulled into the sand, but thankfully we have help too. Here comes Miles to save the day, and it's just, it's so sick seeing this team up, and now we actually get to play as Miles. The best feature about this game is that you get to switch between the two Spider-Men. Like you have Miles using his bioelectricity and you have Peter using his spider arms. It's just such a cool thing that you get to switch between the pair of them. After fighting him for a bit, he decides to start chasing after us, climbing up a building, and honestly, how tall is this building and how big is this guy? Like, leave us alone, Sandman. Instead of leaving us alone, Sandman pulls a reverse Uno card on us and tells us to leave him alone, and he sends Peter flying away. But that's okay, because now we get to test out the feature of the web wings, which helps so much when transversing through the giant city that New York is and the two new areas that they've given us to explore. The two decide to stop toying with him and use this Thor Iron Man team up move from Endgame, and it's just so sick. Watch. Watch Sandman just get absolutely obliterated by this ray of energy. We send Sandman back to the raft, and he gives us a bit of a warning that we're actually in danger, which we take with a grain of salt because Spider-Man is always in danger. Introducing Kraven the Hunter, one of the main antagonists of this game. So, Sandman wasn't wrong. This guy is going to be a major challenge. Now, I don't have anything like cool or awesome to say, I just really need you guys to see how smooth this transition is with the camera just flying over to where Peter is from where Miles was. It's just, it's just such a cool feature and I just really love this game. The two are helping clean up the city after Sandman has like absolutely destroyed it and Miles pulls out this limousine from a sand mound who is holding none other than J. Jonah Jameson. Miles decides to help him out even though he's a bit of a trash guy and starts to swing him through the city to the nearest hospital. We drop him off at the hospital and he decides out of nowhere to name drop me which is just a really cool thing. Menaces. I'm surrounded by menaces. After all that, Peter returns back to the school and he gets fired for abandoning all of his students on his first day during a city-wide crisis. I can't blame her, but damn, a bit brutal. While swinging through the city, we find these little circles, which once we start web-winging through, it speeds us up a hell of a lot. I will be taking full advantage of this feature. We swing through this neighborhood and it's so cool that you can just swing through a suburban area like this in the game, swinging off trees, just heading back to Aunt May's house to meet up with Mary Jane Watson, who is now a motorcyclist. How cool. We enter the house and it's disgusting. What a mess. Come on, Peter, clean up after yourself. MJ leaves the house because it's so disgusting, but she screams outside, so we chase after her, and what do we find? But our best friend, Harry Osborne, just chilling outside with a cane. What a cool guy. 
we go to his car and he pulls out these bicycles and we're gonna have to go ride them with him. It's a very random thing, but also cool. We ride through the city to our old school, Midtown High, and Harry has one singular plan, breaking and entering. What a guy. We enter the school and become our child selves, reminiscing on the past. Some security guards realize we're here, so we have to go and hide, and we get to show off our spider features at an early age. We're stuck on the ceiling with no way to escape. What are we supposed to do? But thankfully, our best friend Harry Osborne has always got our backs, and what's he gonna do? Something you would never expect in a Spider-Man game. Rick roll them all. This funny ha-ha moment is broken up by Norman Osborn, who has got some really depressing news for Harry. Time to move on from this part. Harry invites Peter to join him at the Emily May Foundation, which is a research centre which was named after his mother and Peter's aunt, which is just a really cute touch. Now, ignore the two top corners, I forgot to hide them while I was streaming, and they go away in a moment, but we've been sent to babysit Scorpion, who is being moved from the raft. They forgot to mention they were also moving Martin Lee, which triggers a fire inside of Miles. This is the guy who killed his dad. He is ready to end him. Turns out we're not the only ones who knew these guys were getting moved, as these people have staged an ambush to try and get them. These guys have caused a lot of havoc, so Miles has to go inside the ship to see if there's any survivors still inside. Turns out there's someone on the other side of this door who Scorpion has thrown in here, so Miles has to try and help them. But it's going to be a bit trickier than just pulling the door. He has to do a little puzzle. But there's no time for that, so we decide to punch the door with electricity, and who else would be inside but Scorpion. He's lied. He's not some guy who got thrown in here by Scorpion. He is Scorpion, and he decides to thank Miles by drugging him. What a terrible person. Miles goes through this drug trip a lot better than Peter did, because he ends up curing himself after all this. Miles finds the cell of Martin Lee, and as much as he wants this guy dead, he decides this isn't the way for it to happen. But, as he goes to attempt, he develops a new blue electricity. Instead of chasing after Martin Lee that the hunters have now captured, he decides to use his newfound power to punch the crap out of this propeller fan, which is just insane. Look at that guy go. After that very intense battle, Miles goes to visit his uncle Aaron Davis, who is also known as the Prowler. He has just gotten out on parole and he just wants to see his nephew. They kind of have this cute little reunion thing. Miles is questioning Aaron about Prowler and he confesses that it's all behind him now, but he wants Miles to clean up some of the stuff that he's left behind. We go to one of the spots that he sends us to, and we have this new game mechanic that we now need to work out to solve puzzles and stuff. It's kind of cool that they added in these little things though. As I am a certified big brain genius, I'm able to get into this room with ease and collect the Prowler's stuff. We meet up with Harry, and this entire place is what the Emily May Foundation is. It's so cool that Norman has funded this entire structure, but he's going to have little to nothing to do with it. It's just going to be ours to run. Turns out one of the people who have been recruited to work here is none other than Dr. Kurt Connors, aka the Lizard. And yes, he is canonically the Lizard in this universe already, but he's cured at the moment. We go upstairs and have a little chat with Harry about our position at this place, and we decide to tell him, yes, we're on board. Of course we would be. We have no job. We just got fired. We need the money. We head to this spot where Genki says the person who took Scorpion and Martin Lee is, but the only bad guy we see is this litterer, who actually leads us to find this invisible barrier. We head inside and are ambushed by this group of hunters who we decide to make light work of. Turns out this hunter issue is a lot bigger than we first anticipated, because Peter doesn't actually know about Craven yet, only we know about Craven, but I feel like he's about to find out. After taking out the last guy in this place, we go to figure out who is running it and what's going on. Turns out whoever's running this place is after some of the big bads, but also Felicia, which just makes absolutely no sense. After that, we get this villain vs villain, Scorpion stabbing into Craven while Craven has Scorpion by the neck, but it turns out Scorpion's poison is doing absolutely nothing to the big lad. Craven kills Scorpion, which is just a major twist to this game. I didn't expect to see any of Spider-Man's big bads actually die, but here we are. 
For now, that's where I'm going to actually leave off this game because there is so much more to show and I want to make more videos on it for you guys. So if you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe for more. And I will be back next week with most likely another video of this or something else, but it will most likely be this. I will see you guys later. Bye.